Hello, everybody. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and microwaves. Back, we're back on Martians Eating Chocolate Podcast. My name is Eric. I'm your guide on this thrilling journey into the heart of our city streets and lanes. Today, we're driving into the fascinating world of urban transport, whether it be from cars to bikes to trains to walking to your mom dragging you across the street, whatever you like. Are you ready? Because we'll uncover the streets of how city transport is designed for speed and safety, discover the differences between electric cars, gas cars, and even imagine the future of transportation. And guess what? We'll be inviting you to share your brilliant ideas to make Vancouver's transport even better. This is totally not fake. Uh, Imagine transforming our streets with your creativity. By the end of our adventure, you'll see urban transport in a whole entirely new light and understand why we need to make our travels more eco-friendly for our planet. Why not get started on this amazing journey? Let's ready, set, and go, I guess. We have a special activity planned for you audience today. We have AI generated a few songs, a few songs specifically on buses, transportation, and also eco transportation in general. And we would like to invite you, the audience, to guess which songs are AI generated and which are not. You might find this a little surprising because, as you can hear, the AI generator songs are a bit too good. Hello everyone, my name is Huberry, and today I'm gonna talk about traffic problem. The first one is named five types of public transportation found in cities. I think there's cars, bus, a subway, or a sky train. The second question is how does a subway work? There's tracks to keep them moving, and there's a place or door to enter and exit. Every train and the subway has a different track, so they don't bump together. As soon as a subway train comes to the station, people get off and some people also get on. There are many computers and the drivers at the driver's seat, and there is a light the computer send which track and where to stop to the driver so he or she don't mess up. The third question is what is the difference between a tram and a bus? A tram has a track and buses ride on a road, street, or highway. Buses are short and trams are long. The most impressive one is trams need a computer to control because if there's no computer to send people where to go, it will get accident. Buses are driven by a person so the person could control the bus. Great job, Huberly. That was a very well organized response. However, you're missing a few clear key points here. So, first of all, I like to say that subway and skytrain are the exact same thing. They're both forms of rail transportation and can be classified as one sort of transportation because subway is just skytrain but underground. Even skytrain can be underground and that, therefore it is classified technically as a subway. Second of all, you're missing more types of transportation. For example, there can be ferries and boats. Ferries, for example, they can be present across regions like Hong Kong, crossing the Victoria Strait. That's an example of another form of transportation. There's also helicopters and also there's Manhattan's helicopter service. I I feel like you can be reiterating a few more forms of transportation. That would be good. That was a very deep analysis into trams and buses. However, there are a few points that I would like to reiterate here. Again, first of all, trams and buses, they're not necessarily always longer than each other. A bus can be longer than a tram. A tram can be longer than a bus, for example. Uh, Heavier capacity buses can definitely carry more people than trams, and heavier capacity trams can carry more people than buses. Sometimes bus length even go up to four cars, however tram length. They don't necessarily have to be longer than a bus always. There can be a tram that's shorter than a bus. Second of all, I would like to point out the thing about computers. Trams are running on tracks. Buses are not running on tracks. That is true, however, Buses can be ran on computers. Trams also have computers. They all have computers reinstalled into them. It doesn't mean that tram has a computer, but the bus doesn't have it. Have it. Any sort of transportation has to have computers. Even cars have computers. So that's like a distinction I would like to make. But overall, good response, Huberry. I would like to say that a subway is a fast food chain restaurant that serves sandwiches. That's not really what you're describing. I'm just kidding. I feel like you're mostly accurate on this one. Good job, Huberry. Hi everyone.
one. My name is Emma Jo and I'm seven and a half years old. Today I'm going to talk about something super cool. Which country has the fastest train in the whole wide world? At first I thought Japan had the fastest, but guess what? I found out it's actually in Sh- Shanghai, China. It's called the Shanghai Mavlok train. Can you believe it can zoom at a crazy speed of 460 kilometers per hour? And even on an average day, it goes 251 kilometers per hour. That's super fast. It even once went on a super duper duper high speed of 501 kilometers per hour. Wow. Then there's these trains in China called Fuxing Hao. It is the second fastest trains going up to 350 kilometers per hour. That's still really fast, right? And don't forget about Germany. They have these trains called Intercity Express trains or white warns. They're the third fastest with a normal speed of 300 kilometers per hour. But when they're running late, they can go as fast as 330 kilometers per hour. That's like lightning. But here's the super cool part. Shanghai Mavlog is different from the other fast trains. It doesn't even touch the ground. It flies on this elevated track using super powerful magnets. So it's like riding a magic carpet, super smooth and without any friction. Cool, right? Yes, that is a very well thought out response. I can see that it's clearly very well researched. I'm not faking like uh, every other YouTuber, okay? There's a few things I would like to point out here. I think it's overall really good that you pointed out that the Mangrove train is not fastest, not in Japan. That's correct. The Mangrove train is actually going from Shanghai's airport to Shanghai Central. There will be faster trains in the future, though. For example, there's been proposals to link Tokyo and Kyoto and Osaka with a higher speed train. That's just something I would like to point out. Hi, my name is Victoria, and today I'm answering a question. Why might some people prefer to take the train instead of driving their own car to work? Well, it seems like trains tend to be significantly more reliable than road vehicles, such as cars and buses, which operate at the mercy of traffic. Another advantage of trains over cars is the fact that you don't have to drive yourselves. Enjoy the ride! What role do pedestrian zones play in urban transportation and how do they benefit the city? Well, it turns out pedestrian zones in cities help creating both more reliable and accessible public transportation and encourage the use of alternative forms of transportation, such as bikes and scooters. Again, I would like to point out a few mistakes in your analysis, Victoria. First of all, I thought your analysis was good, but it was lacking some depth. And you're also missing some points. A uh, great thing about trains opposed to cars is that they have larger capacities. A larger capacity means that it can carry more people than cars. Therefore, you can care- more people prefer to take trains because of that capacity as opposed to cars, which is a low capacity. Second of all, you failed to mention accessibility, which people don't really have the skills to drive cars. Cars are necessarily more dangerous because they cause more accidents. And finally, cars get stuck in jams because they have low capacity vehicles. Therefore, people don't want to be stuck in a jam. You can't get stuck in a train jam because there's only a few trains carrying a lot of people. Trains are just overall more convenient and more accessible for more people. However, most places in North America do not have trains as opposed to cars. Most places in North America would rather get you on a car. Speaking of cars, this is how they contribute to pedestrian zones. Pedestrian zones' purpose is to have a safe urban space without cars interrupting that space. Cars tend to take up large spaces and break up large communities. However, they also cause much noise. Pedestrian zones' purpose is to have create a safe haven without any cars and without the barrier of roads. <laughs> Today, I want to share with what I like about public transportation and what I want to... First of all, I think that traffic should change to a time limit so it's more fair and people that are going, it's not just, hey, you have more people here. Oh, and then the other people are like, oh, it's so trafficy here. I should go to the other side. And it just stays red light to the people in that lane. What I like about traffic right now is that if you are on a green light most of the time it's flashing green light 
so it, you can go like faster during the green light. So Victoria, I think you got a lot of analysis we have to make up here personally. So first of all, your analysis on traffic. Flashing green lights don't necessarily, it's not necessarily a factor to traffic, it's more of a thing that's just present in traffic. So you're gonna have to restate your opinion on why traffic specifically, and which parts help you alleviate traffic and which parts you like about the most. Second of all, your analysis on traffic and what you don't like about traffic. So I would agree that traffic is bad because most people think it is. However, your analysis on how to fix traffic, specifically a time warning on red light, doesn't apply here. The time it takes to pass a red light is not necessarily the amount of time that reduces traffic because it just causes traffic elsewhere, you know? Red lights aren't the entire day, only thing that causes traffic. There's also car volume and people wanting to drive elsewhere and road corridors. So there's a lot more factors considering traffic that you're missing here. But otherwise, great analysis. Uh, hi Sophia, what's the main difference between a Tesla and a traditional gasoline car? The biggest difference between a Tesla, which is an electric car, and a traditional gasoline car is that Teslas use electricity to run, and gasoline cars use oil, like the kind you get from gas stations. It's like how some toys need batteries and other you need to wind up. People might choose to use an electric car instead of a gasoline one because electric cars don't need gasoline, which can be expensive and not good for the earth because it makes the air polluted. Electric cars are quieter too, and they don't make as much noise. Also, charging an electric car can be cheaper than buying gasoline, and it's like helping the planet but not making so much dirty air. How do ferries help with public transportation? Do you know any cities that use ferry as a public transportation? Ferries are super cool because they're like buses, but for water! They help people get from one place to another across rivers, lakes, or parts of an ocean without needing a bridge. This is really helpful in cities where there's a lot of water, and roads can't reach everywhere. For example, cities like New York, San Francisco, or Sydney use ferries a lot. In New York, ferries can take you to see the Statue of Liberty or get you across the Hudson River. In San Francisco, they can help people travel across the bay. And in Sydney, ferries take people through the harbor to see the Opera House and lots of other cool places. So ferries are like water taxi that make front that make traveling fun and help connect different parts of the city together. Do you have any suggestion for Vancouver's public transportation? I suggest using Teslas or other electric cars in Vancouver because they will be super quiet but really fast. And they wouldn't make the air polluted because they don't use gas. Riding in a Tesla car would be like zooming in a spaceship but on the ground. They could have screens inside where you can pick cartoons to watch while you're dra traveling. I hope they add, they add cars like Teslas to make getting around the city even more exciting and good for the planet too. Hello, my name is Julia, and today I'm going to talk about a high-speed train. A high-speed train is very fast, and it's faster than a car or a, or a bus. No one can beat a high-speed train more fast. Hello, everyone. I am Preston Drew, seven years old. Did you know that the longest bus route in the world is in India? Stretching all the way to London, that's a really long trip. Imagine traveling through many countries, seeing different landscapes, and meeting new friends along the way. It's like a big adventure on wheels. Now let's talk about cars. What is the difference between Tesla and a regular gasoline car? Teslas are electric, which means they don't need gasoline to run. Unlike most traditional cars, Teslas run on batteries, so there's no air pollution and it reduces our carbon footprint. 
This is great because it helps clean our air and can save money on fuel in the long run. Lastly, how do we improve Vancouver's traffic? I think Lionsgate Bridge is horrible when there's traffic. I think having more buses and encouraging carpooling could help. That way, fewer cars means less traffic and cleaner air for us to breathe. Also, I think building an additional bridge could also be a good solution. Ideally, this new bridge could connect from Stanley Park area directly to North Vancouver, providing an, another route to share the load from Lionsgate Bridge. So first of all, Preston, I would like to say that the longest bus line is not from India to England. It's not very possible to have a single bus that way. The longest bus line depends on what type of bus it is, whether it is a travel sort of coach tourist bus or the intercity transportation bus. Know that there are different types of buses and they all have different lengths depending on the type. In the present, we have many vehicles like cars, trains, buses, sky trains, subways. But there are still a couple of traffic errors sometimes. Like rush hour, many traffic jams, accidents that can cause traffic jams on other highways, freeways. And for me, and I believe for other people, it can be and it can become like a really big problem. I want a way to solve that. And the simple solution is to just, oh, chop down more trees, make more roads, you know, make more lanes, make the roads more accessible, make more bike lanes, make more different wired roads. But right now for global warming, deforestation is like a big thing. Because if we keep cutting down trees, making new, p- new roads, making new buildings, new cities, then the trees will be gone, clean oxygen would be gone, many, many animals will go extinct, and everything's just gonna go downhill. So, how do we really solve this problem? Well, if we can't fix the roads, we might as well do something with the transportation that's on the roads. One main reason for traffic on highways and freeways is because there are crashes and incidents on other highways and freeways. A way to reduce it is that we could make more cars with more protection and maybe self-driving systems but self-driving systems that are tested and good to reduce incidents on the highways and i think that will also reduce traffic on the highways and freeways a lot since technology and everything is becoming more complicated and humans can do incredible things with AI, chat GPT, all of that. We could also think of different types of cars that can go faster, which can reduce the traffic with that extra protection so no one gets hurt or crashes. I think these ways are really good and at least pretty good for reducing traffic in big cities or small roads, and I hope to use them in the future. Can you name three cities that you believe have the most unique public transportation systems, such as trains or subways, and explain why you think they are the best? I can only name two cities, even though I've been to many cities, but when I've been to them, I was little, so I will only name two today. The first one is Shanghai. The Shanghai subway has 18 different routes, and it is the world's longest largest subway. You can almost get to anywhere in Shanghai with the subway, so it is very helpful. The second special thing about Shanghai is that Shanghai has a maglev train which can go up to 400 kilometers per hour. The next city I'm going to do is the exact city where I live in. It is Vancouver. Vancouver has three different types of transportation, which is is sea bus, bus, and sky train. 
The most unique one, I think, is the sea bus because it goes overseas and normal ones in other cities don't really have overseas transportations. I think Vancouver should extend their SkyTrain and make it faster so other people in the community that aren't mainly in the city can, instead of using their cars, use the SkyTrain, which doesn't use as much gasoline, so it will less harm the planet. And plus, the population is growing, so I think the SkyTrain could be a quick transportation to the city. And I also think that Vancouver can add quick charge devices on SkyTrains because a lot more people like using their electronic devices nowadays. So I think they should add those. Plus, I think they should add touchscreen pads to search places where they want to go and what sky train they want to take so they can get their meat while sitting on the train. Okay, so Jonathan, you mentioned Shanghai. I think Shanghai is accurate, but it's not really accurate because the larger system depends on which way you count a system. Is it an intercity system? Is it a group conglomerate of multiple systems? If so, then Tokyo and Greater Japan, I guess, will be the largest system because Tokyo has like 26 subway systems all conglomerated into one large system. That's like by far the largest system in the entire world. There's also the large metro conglomerate that is a bunch of train companies in Western Europe. That's also a system that you could consider. I want you to consider, how would you consider the largest system? Is it the largest single, singular train system or is it the largest multi-train system? That depends on your answer. The three city subway system is good, except my opinion on Vancouver's system is that it's not really good. It just need to expand but much more. Here's my suggestion for Vancouver. First, I think the main problem is that our transportation corridor is very limited to different areas. Vancouver is not a big city, so it's easy to cover a lot of it, but like we're not covering a lot of it. Like West Side, for example, doesn't have any transport. I know that's low density, but there's still a lot of people there who want transport, as well as North, the North Coast, which can help alleviate a ton of traffic. My suggestion for Vancouver in the future. Um, I think that you shouldn't like build too much bridges. First of all, it's very hard to build bridges since Vancouver already has a foundation. And a thing about our city is that we tend to shy away from highways, really protesting the 60s against highways. So I don't see any new bridge being built soon between North Van and Vancouver. I could see one between Richmond and Maine, like at the Main, Main Street area, but I don't feel like North Van is going to allow us to build a new bridge because we already built up the areas around the water. I think what we could do is build a new SkyTrain line to North Vancouver. It carries a, sky, a single SkyTrain line has a ton of capacity compared to a, a single bridge. A single SkyTrain line is way cheaper and it is not polluting as a bridge. It has the same capacity as a bridge and it's way easier to build and doesn't pollute and it doesn't use cars. So I think the thing to solve our traffic is just build more SkyTrain lines. That's simple. We already have SkyTrain. Why not extend upon it? Finally, I want to say that all of our contributions to Getting away from cars and the trains is because of the environment. The environment is very important because we live in it. Also, because I want to ski and like trains are less polluting than cars. That's why we're initiating this push. I don't know. I can't, I can't change the world personally, but you know, like trains are just better because a lot of our pollution actually comes from transportation. This is why we're at least doing this, you know. Thank you for listening to our podcast. We will end it right here. But... I want to tell you, there are some AI pieces within the AI that we generated. Uh, that was not good, correctly worded, but okay. I would like to say that the first song, there were some Japanese AI songs, as well as some English AI songs that we generated. And my opinion, I think that the AI is becoming too good at generating these songs and they kind of need to be stopped. That's kind of my opinion on it. Don't you overuse AI like this. <laughs> yeah. Also, I forgot to say the outro. Yeah, now you can go now. Goodbye and see you next episode. In the silence of the night, under stars so bright. We unite in the fight for what's truly right.